7.32 in Trinidad and Tobago. Suffering from post-holiday depression or post-vacation blues, I'm here to offer you this new product. No, I'm not. I'm sure many of you are especially after two back-to-back -back holiday weekends. This morning, we're joined by counseling psychologist Daryl Joseph, who will give us some tips on overcoming post-holiday depression and how we can keep our spirits up in 2012. Don't keep the spirits flowing because it'll be flowing till carnival. We know that for sure. Uh, but to keep the spirits up. Daryl, good to have you on the program. I've been here for a long time. Thank all the you best. very all, much, Professor. All the best to you. Thank um, you. Really happy to be here. What, what would you say to people? Okay, you know, they wake up this morning and say, oh yes. God, you know, the holiday is over. I mean, I wish I could go back two weeks and then, you know, people will be happy, you know. Okay, for, even forget the drinking and the indulging and the excess that mm. we seem to be so much more happy with one. Now this morning, people driving like wild animals, school opening next Monday, traffic You're non-stop, coming the back. economy in a mess, mm. I have to worry about my job, nothing works in Trinidad and Tobago. Why are we starting this new year? What, 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 you know, that, yes. that's the mindset that tips, people, yes. all people descend into. How would, yes. you, how would you respond to that? Okay, well, a couple of things you have to understand. Um, disappointment happens when you have a mismatch between what you expect to happen and what's really happening. Okay? So, for example, many persons would have spent maybe a lot of money over the Christmas season, money they didn't have. Not that it's not the first time that they've done that, but yeah. people did that, okay? Yeah. And now that the bills will be coming in, and now that all of the Christmas chairs beginning to settle down gradually, um, maybe for some people the focus now is paying for the all-inclusive fest right. and so on, yeah. right? Yeah. But people are now at a stage where they're beginning to realize, oh shocks, you know, I may have spent more than I have, I may have put myself in a bad situation, okay? And the panic or the, 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 you know, the negative feelings may be coming in because of that reality. The very first thing that one has to do is to level set their expectations. Okay? If you are in debt today, you are not going to get out of debt by worrying about it. We have to deal with it. You have to deal with it, but you cannot deal with it unless your mind is focused and unless you are settled on resolving the problem. But how many of us are saying, well, not me, but how many yes. of us are saying, well, I have carnival coming over. I have time to take on these bills now. Eh? I have a costume to sort out. Yeah. I have the all inclusive Saturday, Sunday, and Saturday or whatever. Yes. At the end of February, we go talk about this. You see, one of the problems we have as, um, as Trinbegonians, and I'm saying it problem eh, because in some cases it works very well for us, yeah. but one of the things that we do is that we distract ourselves a lot. We use distraction. Distraction is a, a coping mechanism or a coping strategy that one can use. And we as a people tend to use distraction very often whenever something disturbs us. So you know the, the old adage about the ostrich sticking his head in the yeah. ground as soon as danger appears? Yeah. That's what we do. So we have a problem at home, we go out and we drink. We have a problem with work or with, you know, finances. Or we find our party, we go and we lime and we drink and we, you know, we enjoy the social, which is all good. Nothing mm. is really wrong with that. But when it begins to distract you from dealing with the problem, that's when things begin to get worse for us. And even for those, and, and there's another side, even for those who are well off, financially yes. well off, they have no bills, they have no debts, they yes. come into the new year, you know, it's all, no, no, not, no, mm. no, no legacy, no baggage from 2011 mm -hmm. because they are responsible yes. fiscally and otherwise they are responsible people. Yes. But they still feel a sense of, in a, a different way, mm -hmm. you know, 20, this, uh, you, I don't know how much of the discourse you would have listened to either with Gregory Abood or with Dr. Rolf Balgobin talking mm -hmm. about a country where getting things done takes, takes it's almost impossible. Yes. You, you, you tell us I have to take a whole day to go to the passport office. Yes. I have to take a day and a half and pay some money under the table yes. to get something done in licensing. Yes. Um, and and it, it seems to be almost, as, and then when the traffic starts to pile up from next week, Monday especially, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you almost get a sense that people are even grumpier mm -hmm. than they would usually be. Absolutely. How do you cope with that? Absolutely. Okay, I'm going back to what I said initially in my yeah. opening statement about setting your expectations to match your reality. Now, I lived in Toronto, Canada for a few years at the turn of the decade, turn mm -hmm. of the century. Okay. Yeah. And um, one of the challenges I had when returning, because I always wanted to return home, because home is home, yeah. okay? But one of the challenges I had was that I had to settle my mind to dealing with the kinds of things you're talking about there. Because across there, um, if you go to for a government service, for example, to get some paper or a card or something, and they tell you, come back in two days, in one and a half days, your thing is ready. Yeah. So if you go back early, it's ready. Yeah. And then when you come here and they tell you, come back in two days, I don't need to go any further than right. that, all right? Yeah. Um, similarly, when you go to a financial institution to do a transaction, you know, um, if they tell you walk with three documents, there you walk with three. When they tell you walk with three, you better walk with 10. Yes. Because somebody's gonna want to know what's your blood type or something like that, yeah. all right? So um, 
setting your expectations to match your reality again is key it sounds very simple but it's like many things it's a lot harder in practice to do than it is to say it but that is the foundation the foundation is in accepting understanding your position where you are where things are accepting that and beginning to work forward from there and we could talk about what you do when you go forward from there that reminds me of, 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 the, of the prayer and if I could just just, just uh, paraphrase it's yeah. about uh, knowing what you can change changing the, the things that you can prayer. yeah yeah I changing love the things the serenity prayer yeah and, 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 and accepting the things that yes, you can't absolutely but are we in a are we in a place as a society of mm. serenity no no, not at all, not at all. Are we in a place of anger? Yes, yeah. T tell us about that, because, we, because you yeah. are involved yeah. in, in, in counseling. In, in, I, in I, that, right? Yeah. We're pretty, you see, all right, there's a number of, as we know, there's a number of turbulent things happening in society, and I, you could picture us as persons in a boat, and this boat is on very bad seas and it's very rough and so on, and everybody's kind of panicky, and some people are getting sick and want to throw up and all of this kind of business, and um, nobody is really grabbing the reins. I'll be careful about that. Nobody is really grabbing their reins, all right? And trying to settle themselves and settle everybody and say, look, rough seas are a part of the journey. We need to settle ourselves and get through this together. If we all just running about and, you know, pulling and tugging and so on, nothing is going to improve, nothing is going to get better. That's something you need to do, <clears throat> excuse me, on a personal level, first of all, and it's something you need to do in terms of your relationship and the way you relate with other people around you. And how do, how, how do we, we, we move forward in, in, into trying Good. to achieve that, into Good. trying to achieve uh, some sort of equanimity, some sort of feeling that, okay, times are hard, maybe mm -hmm. things are difficult, but I am moving in a direction yes. that makes me feel comfortable Good. with who I am. Good, we'll talk about that. Yeah. One of the things that people like to do is, uh, I still hear it a lot, people talk about New Year's resolutions. Yeah. I absolutely hate the whole idea of a New Year's resolution, okay? What is far more useful and what works far better is to set goals for yourself, okay, in the coming year. And um, you know, acronyms are very useful and sometimes, you know, they help us to remember things, right? There's a very popular acronym that has um, this involved with goal setting, it's called SMART. You talk about setting SMART goals for yourself, mm. and the letters S of the word SMART, yeah, specific, uh, yeah. uh -huh. meaning that you, know, you, you, you identify exactly what it is you want to do. So if you want to improve your health, improving your health is not a specific goal. You can improve your health by eating better, by losing some weight, by exercising more. So you identify specifically, I want to exercise more, for example, all right? Measurable, meaning that I'm not just going to say, well, okay, I'm going to exercise more. What does exercising more mean? Quantify it. I'm going to exercise three days per week. I'm going to do 30 minutes of, of work and so on, all right? Measurable. Attainable, meaning that make sure that my goals are things I can actually do. So if I've never exercised before, don't tell myself, you know, don't say I'm going to be in yeah, the well, gym. When you go medal in London, you understand? Yeah. All right, that's just not attainable. So it doesn't make any sense, all right? Relevant, meaning make sure that your goal is not something that is irrelevant and unimportant to you. Make sure it's something, make sure you're spending your time on the right things, okay? Um, if you have hobbies, for example, and you want to spend all your days working on your hobbies, that might not be relevant to your financial situation. <laughs> That's true. All right? It will give you a lot of satisfaction. It would, it would, yeah. it would, to an extent. Yeah. Where you might find yourself back in the same position again. Yeah. And T for time bound, meaning that you give yourself a specific time frame within which to work. That, that speaks to a lot of discipline. Yeah, Daryl. Yes. Uh, uh, which is uh, which is specific, uh, measurable, attainable, relevant, time bound. Accidentally, that's not the first word of our uh, watchwords. <laughs> in discipline, production, <laughs> and tolerance. But some will say that the discipline has gone out the window. Mm. The production is down the drain. Yeah. The tolerance is barely survivable because, and, and and again, we've highlighted it in a couple of our discourses previously. Mm. You listen to the level of discourse that mm. goes on. Yes. In, especially on the public airways yes. in Trinidad and Tobago. It always seems to be about what them have and what I don't have. Yes. And them have it because yes. they teeth it or they, it's, somehow they got it unfairly yes. and I am a victim, yes. of, 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 victim. Of, of, of circumstances. Mm. There's, a, there's a very high level of, um, uh, I don't have a precise word for it, but a lot of people feel like a victim. Yeah. They walk around with that sort of a chip on the shoulder that um, you know, somebody else has to provide something for me. Now, we could go to town, literally, talking about that and going into where that came from and how it is, all right? But that, unfortunately, is one of the, the national, um, oh gosh, attitudes we have. Well, how do we move out of that? Back. Because, I mean, the, the thing is that if you're, tr you're trying to find a way where people, of course, 
we, we seem to recall and we always think of the past as being better. It may mm. not necessarily have been so. Mm. Where you got the sense that living in simple circumstances yes. wasn't exactly a cause for weeping and wailing. Yes. That there was a level of satisfaction with your circumstances and a desire to improve. Yes. Not, not across the board, yes. but generally. Now you seem to get the sense that what the government could do for me. I, uh, what this, my, my, my boss treated me like a dog. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 there's everybody out to get me. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm not just talking about the lowest level. Yes. Uh, and I don't mean it disparagingly. Even at the, probably even more at the higher levels. Yes, People seem yeah. to feel that this one out to get me, yes. that one out for me, and so on. Mm -hmm. they, they, this, this is concept of victimhood. Where's mm -hmm. that coming from? Mm -hmm. um, it's difficult for me to say at this point, because I don't like to talk things off the top of my head yeah. unless I've researched it properly, sure. all right? So it's difficult for me to see where it came from. What I can say is that um, it seems to have increased over time along with a couple of other increases. One of the things that we've seen much more of in the last 20 to 30 years is that people have become, because of more access to wealth, um, people have become a lot more desirous of things that may not have been desirous in years and decades gone by. It goes without saying that we have become more materialistic. Materialistic, yeah, but, absolutely. But have, have we been able to manage that better or worse than, than other societies? Because you look at what happens in the United States. Yeah. Uh, you look at what happens in so-called disciplined uh, in jurisdictions. Fellas yes. were in the early stages of the financial crisis, yes. fellas would walk in front of a train and end his life because yes. the whole thing was coming yes. down on him. Um, you see the road rage. Mm -hmm. People talk mm -hmm. about road rage now mm -hmm. in the same way that you used to read about it in foreign yeah. newspapers yeah. and so on. What, what is happening? Listen, once you begin to focus on self and on the acquisition of material things, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, eh? but listen carefully. Once you begin to make that your focus, you will never have enough. You will always want more. You will become more focused on yourself and on what you want and on what you need. And there's going to be, you know, the, the other person is going to become less important. And other how would you respond to those who will say, Daryl Joseph, that easy mm. for you to say, but you don't have to deal with what I have to deal with. I have, I have all, and I watch in this, the Makaram next door who don't do any work <laughs> and he has the big job in the government and so on. Mm. And they're leaving, they're treating me like a dog all the time. Yeah. And I'm being victimized. Yes. It's easy for you to talk about yeah. those sorts of things. You all, you, Whenever you offer a solution, mm -hmm. you almost get somebody saying, yes, you say, you will. Yeah, yes, you're making sense, but yes, I've there's, had, al there's always that. I was talking on parenting on a radio station a few weeks ago, and a, a person called in and said, you always put in these cycles to talk about parents. Why did you get a real parent? I have four children. <laughs> All right, but you're not a real parent you because, because you're not because a real I'm, parent. Yes, because because you're, not, you're not complaining. Exactly. You're not uh, griping. Yes. You're not saying, Perhaps. what is it for me? Perhaps. Why I want Perhaps. this? I want that. Perhaps. Everybody goes through their stresses and their problems, you know and nobody knows what a person is going through. You might be looking at somebody who may be, okay, let's say you're looking at somebody who uh, has the appearance of earning a lot of money and so on, right, and, and working for a lot of money. You don't know what their expenses might look like. When persons, when families break up, for example, and people divorce and people have to look after, you don't know what they, you know, at, at the end of the day, you don't know what their net looks like. You don't know what kind of stresses people have to deal with. And that is one of the, um, that also adds to the, the way that people operate and the, the amount of angst and anxiety among people. We don't give the benefit of the doubt that you're going through something too. So I am going through something and then, you know, I, my attitude spills over on you and you react to me. And not for one minute will I stop and tell myself, you know, well, hey, maybe Fazir having a bad day today too. Well, let me back off and leave him. No, I'm going to barge into you. And, and how do we, as, as individuals, mm -hmm change that sort of situation how do you reach a position where you say okay it's not just about me yeah it's not just about whether i could get to work never mind the traffic situation even though i leave in late yes. i must get to work yes. at, at a particular how do we get beyond the, the perpendicular pronoun the okay. i i i okay okay um i'll give you a little bit of a framework and then people will modify the sure, framework sure. accordingly okay you have to look you have to look after the different needs that you have we talk about emotional needs mental needs spiritual needs and physical needs okay um emotional needs it is very, it's been proven scientifically that when you nurture a lot of positive relationships around you, positive people who are for you, who help you to improve, who encourage you and so on, that it, it does a, a wealth of good to yourself, not just emotionally, but all of the other, the other, the other dimensions as well, physically and so on, all right? So you need to nurture positive relationships. Um, one of the things that helps as well is developing a, I'm gonna simplify it and say developing a, a positive outlook on life. If in a day, in a, any given day, 
six or seven good things out of ten might happen to you, and then three or four things might be bad. But you only remember these three or four things. You don't make a most people don't make a daily habit. Are we wired for that sort of thing? Kind that, of. That, that, yeah, that, kind that, of. That the negative always kind sticks. Kind of. Kind of. Maybe it goes back to the caveman days where they fight, the fight or flight response. Yeah. Where you know you had to respond when a danger comes because it could eat you literally. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we kind of programmed to ignore the positive things that happen to us and to focus only on the negative. So one of the things that I encourage people to do is at the end of each day, and again it may sound like discipline, but I'll tell you a little bit about training and discipline just now. At the end of each day, reflect on, remember the positive things that have happened to you and keep those things in check. So the next time somebody annoys you on the road, you remember, look, somebody annoyed me, but this and so and so happened and this and this is going well, all right? So you need to cultivate a positive emotional um, state. Um, also live life. Don't spend your day worrying about what could happen or what might happen next or what might happen tomorrow, right? You're in the moment, live in the moment, okay? Be responsible and so on, but live in the moment, all right? So we talk about your emotional needs. Mentally, it's also been proven that when a person is seeking to improve themselves, when they're working towards something, again, it, ha it has a positive effect upon their outlook, upon their health and so on. So I, you know, I was talking to one of the um, staff members coming up and I was asking him, what are you doing for yourself this year? What are yeah. you studying this year? Yeah. Doing a, a course or something like that? Do something. There's many different avenues and opportunities to improve yourself. You don't have to go to UTT or UE or something like that. It could be very simple. You could be learn to do something at the home that you were fighting to do all the time. Learn to do these things, okay? Um, spiritually, you absolutely need to take care of the inner self. And I'm not necessarily talking religion, although religion for those who are religious, yeah, like yeah. myself, will play a very big part of it, all right? Um, we live in a very noisy world, and people just da 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 talking, talking, going, 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 and people almost seem to be afraid of silence. You, you sit down in a, in a room. Certainly interesting. Yeah, yeah, you sit down in a room. Yeah. People get uncomfortable yes, with silence. Yes, and, and that is indicative of a high level of dysfunction in our, in our people, in our society. That you can't sit still for a few minutes and just be quiet and allow yourself to settle and to think about, you know, where you're going, what's happening, what you want and so on. You must be you able to do You notice how loud people put the radio on or the, or the, yes, the tech on in the, in the vehicle yes, when, as soon as they sit down. Yes, it, it's yes. Like they're scared of silence. Yes. We have a few minutes left, but sure. just at this point you wanted to make about trainees and discipline. Yeah, I want to make a, a point sure. about trainees and discipline. Yeah. Trainees have an immense amount of discipline, you know. But we don't apply the discipline maybe in the right places. Let me tell you something. I'm going to put a little plug eh? I, I'm a panist. I play pan. Yeah. I'm not playing this year, but um, where's our camera? Nilan Masi, uh, Trinidad, uh, All Stars. Uh, uh, We're going for it again this year. Going for it, all right? But I only had a cheap new show I gave in a plug, boy. But, but go ahead. Go ahead. Don't cheap. Nah, well, that is my heart, man. That's yeah, my heart. Yeah, That's yeah. my heart. All right? Okay. But let me tell you something. Um, if you ever, even if you don't like pan, and you, don't, you find it, you know, you don't understand what's going on, visit a pan yard when a steel man is practicing for a competition coming up. And you watch what happens when the arranger, whoever's in charge, knocks the bell or whatever it is. Yeah. And everybody, regardless of who vex, who upset, who didn't have money, who horning somebody, who getting horned, whatever it is, everybody stops. And you don't hear, you could hear a pin drop. And everybody listens, okay? And everybody follows the instruction. One, two, three, four, everybody together, all right? That's discipline. Yeah. There are accomplished musicians who read scores and who can write music and so on, who can't do that kind of thing that easily. But we could do it. You go to any fed. Or you watch it on TV, maybe on yeah, TV yeah, 6, Exactly, right? I wouldn't watch it. I, I wouldn't watch the whole FET. I'll watch it on the news. I, right. I, I fail to see the value of broadcasting a FET, but anyway, that's another story, but go but ahead. But you let yeah. any of our top artists get on that stage and tell people complicated instructions. Move left and right? And, and by so license, simple. they move so far left, they almost end up in the sea? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. You understand, yeah. all right? Yeah. And we obey, we follow it, and we go ahead and we do it. So, you know, to say that we don't have discipline and thing, um, it's not true. Is that discipline or is that being led? A willingness to be led? In the sense that I, I, I see some specific goal, mm -hmm. I, could get a, I, could get, I could win Panorama mm -hmm. or, or, or eat a food, mm -hmm. or I could enjoy myself and party till, till, till the break of dawn. Yeah. So I'm going to do whatever it takes. But Perhaps. in my everyday life, yes. which is 95% of the real life, yes. I'm not prepared to apply right. those same rules. Because the, the, the positive gain at the end may be longer term than the immediate gratification of a win or you know mm -hmm. enjoying yourself or whatever it is. So we don't think in terms of, look, if I get up at this time every morning and I do this and then I go to work and then I study and I do this, this will be the benefit at Why the end of the so year. Why is it so hard to translate that discipline from the pan yard mm -hmm. or in the FET yeah. to everyday life for, for, for the average Trinidadian and Tobago? Yeah. Is it that we have life too easy? No, I wouldn't say we have life too easy, you know. People, you know, the age we live in, we, we like a lot of instant things. And we talk about instant coffee and you press something yeah. and something happens and so on. We like immediate gratification. But, okay? but, but I mean, is it that we, we just so 
so caught up in copying other cultures because we have had our culture of, of difficult times, relatively difficult times mm. of working hard. The earlier generations, they would have had to, to you know, to, to build, help build this country to, mm. to a certain level. Yes. Don't we feel somehow it, that, that sort of discipline ingrained in us or have we abandoned all of that? You know something, Fizzer, I, I really have to rely on the historians to come up with this, okay? Yeah. There's something different about our history when you compare to the history of, for example, the other Caribbean islands, you will hear persons saying that we have never had to fight exactly. the way yeah. that our brothers and sisters we in other no, islands... We never had any major sacrifices for what we enjoy. No, no. We've never had to fight to the death for anything, okay? And I mean, I'm being sensitive to people who, living, who may be feeling like they're living, for, you know, literally fighting for their life yes. now. I'm not being insensitive towards that. But I'm saying as a people, in terms of our history, Relatively speaking, we have had things easy. Relatively speaking, yes. we have had things easy. And I feel somehow, and I, again, this may, remains to be validated, but I feel somehow that that has sort of impacted or imprinted itself upon the way that we deal with adversity and the way we deal with challenges. That um, you know, we can fight for something that might be right there in front of us and where the gratification, the pleasure is immediate. But to put our shoulders to the wheel and to fight for something that you, know, you can't see just yet, it's somewhere down the line, I don't know, that, that seems to be a bit of a challenge for us. That's and a in, bit of a in, task. in 40 seconds, if you can, does yes. that mean that when we, we face even the slightest difficulty mm -hmm. that we overreact? That because we expect things easy, yeah. that any obstacle, we, we tend to overreact. Is, is that, is that uh, we, possible? We go back to our default behavior, which is distraction. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, good to get your perspective. Let, let me just say it again, smart, specific, Measurable, mm -hmm. attainable, mm -hmm. relevant. Relevant. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the R. I forget to spell smart <laughs> with the R because we sometimes in the media we can't spell it. R that's for right. relevant and T for time bound. Time bound. Thanks very much for the advice. Very Let's welcome. hope that, that some of us uh, take it on board, including myself, and we try to bring some context, some proper context, some contentment in 2012, which is probably what we should aspire to in many respects. We have uh, the news uh, for you, which may not uh, content, content you, depending on the context of, of uh, the news, but I'll be back to wrap up the program in a short while.